Okay, so I'm here in my friend Ethan's studio, and we've been playing a lot with drum machines. And uh, specifically, we've been using a lot the Electron Model Samples and the Roland TR6S. And they're both incredible in their own way. Um, they kind of do different things, um, but they, uh, they're both extremely capable. Uh, however, they both share one common weakness, which is a lack of good quality velocity-sensitive drum pads. So for the TR6S, um, when you're in this instrument play mode, you can get these six little pads here, which are, you know, to play the instruments, and so you can live play on it, right, that kind of thing, but they're not velocity sensitive at all, they're just these little buttons. And um, in the step sequencer, you can input velocity per step, um, but there's no way to, to add velocity in kind of the live play mode of this. Uh, with the model samples, it does have these six velocity sensitive pads right here, um, but they are really, really stiff and hard to play. They're just, they don't come across uh, very well. So it's like you can do it, but it takes, it takes a lot of practice. You just have to hit them so hard um, that oftentimes if you're just sitting there playing by yourself, even sometimes in headphones, the, the sound it makes of you hitting this pad is actually louder than the sound you're getting out of the instrument, which is pretty ridiculous. So it's, um, so while they are here, and I'm glad that they're here, they're just not very good quality if you want to do more of a finger drumming style thing. Um, now also, likewise with the step sequencer, you can input velocity per step, uh, so both of them do that just fine. Um, but again, for the live play finger drumming style thing, uh, it, it just doesn't really work very well. So um, I've been thinking about, okay, what is a kind of an external velocity sensitive drum pad kit that I could um, use to control these types of instruments? And the one I'm actually looking at uh, is the Akai MPK-8. Uh, it's this little guy um, that does both USB and uh, MIDI over TRS, which is like the five pin DIN style of MIDI over TRS ports. So uh, what's important about that is that you do not need a USB host involved. You can go from that device directly to either of these, anything that inputs MIDI, um, the five pin MIDI style, without a computer involved at all, which is great. Uh, so I'm considering one of those. I don't have one at the moment. What I do have is my friend's um, Akai MPK Mini. This is the Mark II version of this. Um, this is purely USB. So in order for this setup to work, we do have to have a USB host in the mix. Um, that very easily could be a laptop. Uh, I think it could also be a phone or a tablet. What we're using here at the moment is the Akai Force, uh, which is kind of a little bit off screen here to the side, which can act as a USB host, um, using it because it's here, uh, but it's total overkill for this. You could get by with something much, much simpler. The nice thing about the, the Akai Force though is it also has a mini monitor, which was super helpful in helping us figure out why the setup did not work for the first like hour that we were trying to get it to work. And um, basically the key is you have to go into the software for whatever kind of drum pad thing you're using here to set it so that these pads are outputting the lowest possible uh, MIDI notes on a piano keyboard, right? So like if you looked at, you know, note C, uh, C sharp, D, D sharp, etc., counting up from the lowest possible notes on an 88 key keyboard, that's what you want these to output. And most drum machines, both of these included, if you set them to the auto channel, the MIDI auto channel, it will automatically map those note values to your tracks. So in this case, uh, the MPK Mini is set, configured in the software to output those note values. Um, and it is uh, outputting on MIDI channel 10. And then both of these drum machines are listening or inputting on also MIDI channel 10. And that is set to the auto channel, meaning that it, uh, it automatically maps those notes to whatever, whatever tracks you have. Um, with the TR6S, we also had to turn on the MIDI Omni mode. Um, I don't really understand why. It should be able to listen just on MIDI channel 10, but for some reason it didn't work. As soon as you turned on Omni mode, it all worked. So with that one in particular, you also have to do this Omni mode. So definitely it's a bit finagly to get this to work, especially getting it to work over USB, because again, you have to have a USB host in the mix. Um, without a USB host, um, this wouldn't work at all. And if, uh, unless you get something like the MPK-8 that again has native MIDI outputs. Other options in this space would be like a Launchpad Pro, which also has native MIDI outputs, but it's uh, a lot more expensive, so. So anyway, um, the main thing I want to look at here is like, how does it make these instruments better or does it matter at all to have these kind of, these better quality velocity sensitive drum pads? 
And so at the moment, I've got each of these pads controlling um, the tracks in here. Uh, so we've kind of got parity in that the TR6S has six different tracks and the, um, or six different instruments, um, and the model samples has six different tracks. Now the TR6S is, uh, is playing its own kind of internal analog circuit uh, behavior. Uh, so it's its own kind of internal instruments. It is acting as a synth here. It can also play samples. It can also play FM. Uh, and that's, that's kind of outside the scope of this video. For the moment here, what I'm using is just kind of a default 808 kit on this. On the model samples, I loaded up samples from an, from an 808. So I'm trying to get roughly similar sounds between the two, even though they're approaching it from a different kind of perspective here. So, oh, you just went to sleep on me. There we go. Okay, so um, let's start with just this bass drum sound. So for the moment, we'll just start with the TR6S. I'm gonna crank the volume on this all the way down so it's not doing anything. Uh, right, so that's, that's this bass drum sound, 808. And um, with this little button, it's fixed velocity. I'm getting the same velocity every single time. Now with this pad, I can get velocity sensitivity, which is great. And um, the it, it, it's these pads are pretty sensitive in that, like you can really just I mean, if I just lightly brush them, nothing happens. But with a little bit of pressure, I can get them all to trigger, right? Versus like if I try to do that on here. I have to fully depress the button to get it to trigger. And again, there's no velocity. With the model samples, I mean, you can rub them all you want. They're not gonna do anything. Even hitting them isn't gonna do anything. You have to hit them hard. I'll turn the volume back up here. I mean, you see how much it's like shaking this table here, right? So if I hit this with the same velocity and this, I might get a note that's very quiet, very low velocity, but it's um, it just doesn't work as well. So, and especially if you're trying to do kind of faster finger drumming kind of stuff, like these just, they just simply don't work for that. Um, so what I did is I have these all routed together. Um, for the moment, let's switch to the model samples. So I'm gonna turn the volume on this off. It's no longer doing anything, all right? Um, so we're purely hearing the model samples here. Let's turn this up, make sure that level's good. Yep. Yeah, okay. So um, what I did is I went through each of these and um, just put in uh, like recorded notes into it and checked what velocity I'm getting back out of it. So, so we'll just do that here. Okay. So let's look at that one. So as I input those, uh, velocity 100, 100, 100. Oh, no, I'm looking at the wrong track. Oh my goodness. There we go. <laughs> okay, so I put those in as velocity 48, 125, 81, oops, uh, 25. All right, so that's a pretty big spread across that. And you can hear, I'll turn this guy off. Right, there's a lot of variability in the, uh, in the volume there because of the different velocities. So that's what you want. That's the whole point of velocity sensitive pads is to be able to live play that kind of variability. Um, so the biggest challenge I'm finding with this MPK Mini is not just getting max velocity every time um, and learning, learning how to just hit it a little bit lighter than I'm used to. So um, again, if I tried to do that same type of spread with the model samples uh, native velocity sensitive pads here, it just wouldn't work. Um, so let me try, I'll clear this out, and we'll, I'm gonna try to record a similar thing just using this pad here. Okay. So that one was velocity 18, 1, 80, and 28. And so that's also a pretty big spread, but the idea is most of those are way too low. Like a velocity of one is basically inaudible. You can't hear that. Um, and that was me, you know, hitting this pretty lightly, but still much harder than I would have to hit this to get the same thing. So it's like with practice, you can get used to either one, but I will say just after trying to play on this for a while, like your fingers just kind of get tired because you're slamming it so hard. So um, it's, uh, it's definitely just, it's a, it's a strong weak point in this. And to the point where some people are actually modify this, they take it apart, 
put bits of tape under each of these pads to help fill in that gap between the pad and where the actual uh, you know, sensor is underneath it to make these more sensitive. And I'm kind of thinking about doing that too, because that, it just, uh, I think it would be a big improvement. So um, what else do I want to look at here? Oh yes, so with the newest firmware on this, they did do something that kind of helps address this, which is if you do function uh, pad config menu, well, first off, you can, you can set each of these to be a fixed velocity. So you just throw away uh, velocity sensitivity and just have it always trigger the same, which frankly for some things might be better, right? But if you do still want some velocity sensitivity, you can go to this V depth uh, or velocity depth menu, the second one down. By default, it's 127, meaning you have the full range of zero to 127 of different possible velocity values, but you can shrink that range down. So like I'm gonna crank it down to uh, let's say 76. So basically I'm taking the full range and I'm you know, roughly halving it. So now the, the lowest note that I can play is, is less, right? So effectively I've made this pad ultimately louder kind of regardless of how hard I hit it. So let's see how that goes. So let me try to record something here. Okay. So that was velocity 34, 14, and 11. And now those again are all very low numbers. And something that I don't fully understand here is that those should be kind of quieter um, just based on the pure velocity value there. So maybe this pad config, the velocity depth thing is actually shifting the whole scale. Um, I, I don't fully understand uh, how that works in terms of the numbers they display, but just listening to it, I can tell that, I mean, it's, it's just better. Um, so if you, if you are going to use the onboard um, velocity sensitive pads here on the model samples, I do recommend, uh, basically what I would do is just make a template uh, that in which each one of these is set to a velocity depth of somewhere in the range of like 50 to 70, 50 to 80, something like that, so that you have a much smaller velocity range to play with. And that's gonna allow these to just basically work better. They're gonna be more expressive. You're gonna enjoy yourself more by doing it that way. Okay, so um, that's, it's good that they added that feature because at least it's a way of doing something in the software uh, side without physically modifying this to make it better, right? Um, and so I, I definitely use that a lot if I'm using this by itself. Go through, set each one of them, just crank them down. And they don't have to be terribly exact. You know, I could, each one can be slightly different, it's fine. There we go, so now. Okay, so it's better, it's definitely better, but it still just requires a fair amount of force. I will also say just the physical size of these is pretty small to where like, it's kind of hard to use two fingers on them, whereas these pads are huge. Right, you can do a lot of kind of fast two finger stuff on a single pad with that, which is I think definitely beneficial. Um, so let's switch back to the TR6S here, crank this one down, crank this one up. loud. There we go. So same kind of deal here, right? Um, where built into the machine, you have no velocity sensitive pads whatsoever. Uh, your only option is to enter velocity in the step sequencer. If you just use these, you're always getting a, a, a fixed velocity. And I will also say like, it's fine for kind of sketching in a little. It's, it's not terrible, um, but they're so close together and I just don't particularly like the way they feel. I don't really like the response of them. So um, it's something that I, you know, I would use if that's all I had, but it's uh, definitely, I think, an improvement to add legit uh, drum pads to this. So um, let's go through here and do something. So I will do the same kind of thing. I will add, let's make sure I clear whatever sequence I had in there before. Oh, here, I can just do this clear, 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 clear. There we go. Okay, so let's add, again, my, let's add this closed hi-hat as my metronome. Okay.
So there you go. So um, yeah, I, I just find it a lot more fun, a lot more interesting to do it this way. Now I'm gonna have the same problem where probably a lot of those that I just tapped in were at full 127 velocity. And that's just me not being used to the sensitivity of this. Um, and I don't remember offhand how to view the sensitivity or the velocity of each step. I think there's probably a way in here somewhere. There it is, velocity, okay. So yeah, so now I can view that one. So 127, 124, 127, 127, 65, 127. So yeah, vast majority of what I put in was full velocity, but there's at least a few in there that were a bit less. Um, so it gives you the option. Okay, well that's, that's about all I have to say on this. Um, I will say that adding nice drum pads to these devices to me really opens them up as a better live performance uh, kind of thing. If you're just sequencing anyway, it doesn't particularly matter. Um, but if you want to be able to do more finger drumming type performance on it, adding the pads to it is super, super nice. And I will report back on how the, uh, the MPK-8 actually works in that function um, assuming I get one, because that should be even easier to set up and configure than the MPK Mini here. Um, and it's a bit more dedicated because it's just the pads. So uh, that's all I got. Cheers.